All right, so we are going to be working on our poetry pockets. So go ahead and track that down. It looks like this. We did a lot of it yesterday. And we're gonna keep working on it today. Track it down, where is it? All right, we got it. The page that we're on says main idea. And so we are reading the paragraph and trying to figure out the purpose, the purpose of the passage. All right, so number one says a few years ago, our main street didn't have much to offer. Most people went to the large shopping mall just outside the city limits or they shopped in the main city itself. However, a few brave entrepreneurs decided that our town had possibilities and they opened some unique shops. They scheduled some special events like concerts and art fairs and that brought more people to the main street. As more people came, more businesses opened. We had seen several added in just the last year, including a tea room, a coffee shop, an antique store, and an old fashioned general store. The most recent addition was a second home, a store run by a local charity that sells used items and clothing. Now our town is an interesting place to be. So main idea of the, chop, of the passage, was it A, the most recent addition is called a second home? Is it B, most people love gathering on Main Street? Is it C, the writer's town is boring? Or D, the writer's town has developed into an interesting place to be? So don't say the answer out loud, just fill in the bubble. Okay, let's try the next one. The Hawaiian alphabet has only 12 letters. Did you know that? They're A, E, H, I, K, L, M, N, O, P, U, N, W. That's all five vowels, but only seven consonants. The people of Hawaii mainly speak English now, but they still know some Hawaiian words. So main idea of this passage is it that the Hawaiian alphabet has only 12 letters, the people of Hawaii mainly speak English, Hawaiians need their alphabet to learn Hawaiian words or that the Hawaiian alphabet includes five vowels to encompass the whole passage. Which one of those would be the best main idea? All right, I like this last one because it's something we may have talked about. I think when the, we talked about the Egyptians, it says shampoo was invented about a hundred years ago but before then, people found other ways to clean their hair. People in ancient Egypt used citrus juice. The Hopi Indians used a tea made from juniper leaves. Victorian women put raw eggs in their hair to get rid of dandruff. Good luck getting that out. Even today, some people use pantry items to clean their hair like cornstarch or cornmeal or flour. It's sprinkled or rubbed in and then brushed out. A little goes a long way. What's the main idea of the passage? Citrus juice isn't just for breakfast anymore. <laughs> people have found lots of ways to clean their hair. Some people put weird stuff in their hair. Oh no, <laughs> Happens all the time, they're used to it. And shampoo is the best hair care product. You wanna walk around for a minute? It's super dark today, so we kind of need the light. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. So uh, if you're still working on main idea page, that's okay. I'm going to have you move on to prepositions for now, just so you don't get behind. And then you can always go back and fill in any gaps that you have at the end. Okay. All right, prepositions. Uh, prepositions, when we learned this in the fall, like we spent several weeks on prepositions, but it was a long time ago and you were only here every other day. Um, so let me just remind you, prepositions, okay. 
So I told you that my sixth grade teacher used to say to, uh, to us in the classroom, like picture a log in the woods and you go up to the log and your relation to the log would be a proposition. So you can be near the log, you can be on the log, you can be off the log, you can be under the log, you can be inside the log, squeeze in. Um, you could be by the log, under, near, by, in, on, off, out. Any of those words are prepositions. They tell, so a preposition, if we think back to, we had a test over this a long time ago, seven parts of speech. Preposition was, um, tells where or when something is, where or when, where or when. But I'm gonna add um, one more piece to that. It is on your poster up front, by the way. Um, Prepositions, are, yep, it is. Um, so we have prepositions of time, that would be when. So it could be something like, um, soon. Uh, uh, we have prepositions of time, location, that would be your near, by, on, off, under and then direction. And that would be like if your relation to something, if you're going, like you could say, I walked past the log. So your um, body in motion. So you're showing where you walked through it or you, walked, you can walk near it. Um, so if you are in motion, then you want your proposition of direction. Okay, you don't need to know any of that for this. However, this is easier. And that's why <laughs> I've taken off one of the directions. So um, typically you would circle the preposition and then on the line, you would tell me if it was a preposition of time, direction or location, but to simplify it because, you know, we didn't totally get that far this year, but now you have a little bit of a introduction to that. That doesn't hurt either. So all you have to do all you have to do here is find a preposition and write that preposition on the line. Easy, right? And I, for a lot of these, there's more than one. So I will read it to you. I'll read each one. And you are just jotting down a word from the sentence that you feel is a preposition. Remember the log in the woods, on, off, near, by, in, out. Um, and also the other pieces that I just added in time, soon never, um, and then direction through, near, by. Uh, yeah, I guess that's helpful. All right, here we go. Number one, our basketball team will play against Fairfield High School tonight. Our basketball team will play against Fairfield High School tonight. So you're looking for a word that tells where or when. Got it. It's easier when I throw the definition out there, isn't it? Number two, in case of a tornado, go to a room with no windows. There's a bunch here. In case of a tornado, okay, I'll do it again. <laughs> it's going to be a pain. Go to a room with no windows. Looking for a preposition. You're looking for a word that tells where or when. And like I said, there's, thank you. There's more than one in a sentence. You just have to jot one of them down. Good luck, the odds are in your favor. Number three, after searching for over an hour, I finally found my keys underneath the blanket that was lying on the sofa. So many in this sentence. So you can definitely find one and pop it on the line. After searching for over an hour, I finally found my keys underneath a blanket that was lying on the sofa. Where or when, got it? Writing it down, okay. Number four says our fourth grade class has been picking up litter every Saturday morning throughout the community. Where or when? Our fourth grade, grade class has been picking up litter every Saturday morning throughout the community. Got it? All right. Write it down. Number five, Dr. Mason said Haley couldn't go outside her house for two weeks. 
This is very nice. All right, so where when? Dr. Mason said Haley couldn't go outside her house for two weeks. See it? Write it? Move it on. Everyone should be aboard the train by 2 p.m. Everyone should be aboard the train by 2 p.m. Seven says, if you look above the shelves, you will see the picture that my dad painted. If you look above the shelves, where? Above the shelves. You will see the picture that my dad painted. All right, number eight, I gave the money in my piggy bank to my brother to help him pay for youth camp. It's very nice. I gave the money in my piggy bank to my brother to help him pay for youth camp. Several there. Jot one down. Number nine, the cat climbed up to the top of the tree and couldn't get down. Mm -hmm. Used to happen to my cat all the time. The cat climbed up to the top of the tree. Where? and couldn't get down. Silly, just silly. Why do they do that? Number 10, I missed my class because of my brother's practical joke of putting shaving cream in my hair. Okay, great sentence, but we need to find some prepositions. So where, when, I missed my class because of my brother's practical joke of putting shaving cream where? In my hair. Number 11, as I walked toward the noise direction, I began to get an eerie feeling that something wasn't quite right. As I walked toward the noise, I began to get an eerie feeling that something wasn't quite right. So there's that preposition of direction I was talking about. Number 12 says, in addition to Amanda and her parents, there were 10 people at the party. In addition to Amanda and her parents, there were 10 people where? at the party. Oh, Getting bored of this. Sometimes if I just wake my arms, it comes back on. Sometimes it doesn't care about that. Um, lastly, he wasn't paying attention and walked right into a tree similar to our log. He wasn't paying attention and walked right into a tree. Got it? All right, so once again, if you are stuck on one, skip it for now, come back to it when people are um, doing the 30 minute read and you can finish up at that point. Only halfway through the week and there's time. But because we don't wanna lose you on the next part, stay with me. We're moving on to personification. We've done a lot of personification this year. Um, so again, this is yet another activity for us, but we should be able to knock it out of the park. Um, in the directions this time, say underline the idea, object, or animal, whatever's doing the um, personification, and then circle the verb, circle whatever they're doing. That is something that only a person can do. All right, so personification, an object, idea, or animal acting like a person in this case. And so, and then we're gonna circle what they're doing. Got it? So number one, the sun danced across the sky. I'm gonna stop it there because we got enough info. The sun danced across the sky. Underline the object and circle the verb. Typing going on. Number two, the big full moon guided me through the forest. The big full moon guided me through the forest. Underline what they're what it is and circle what they're doing. The big full moon guided me through the forest. Got it. 
number three. The mountain listened to the rumbles beneath its surface. Uh-oh, earthquake. Or a volcano. Or a volcano before an earthquake. Number three. The mountain listened to the rumbles beneath its surface. So underline the object, circle what it's doing. Number four says, as the rain pounded to the ground, everyone ran for cover. As the rain pounded to the ground, everyone ran for cover. So underline the object and circle the verb. Number five, the old man sat at the edge of the sea as the waves crashed on the shore. This is a funky one because don't include the old man. He's a person. Just trust me. Yes. The old man sat at the edge of the sea as the waves crashed on the shore. So underline the object, circle the verb. Number six says the old car groaned as it made its way down the long open road. The old car groaned. That's pretty much all we need. All right, so underline the object, circle a verb. Number seven says, the wind whispered lonely sounds as it blew through the creaky windows. So the wind whispered, underlining the object, the thing, and circle the verb. Number eight, the leaves raced to the ground as the children ran across the playground. The children are people, so leave them. Leave them be. The, le the leaves raced to the ground. Underline the object or the thing, circle the verb. Number nine, the pencil moaned as the boy turned the handle on the pencil sharpener. I bet you didn't know I was moaning. You're too focused on the pencil sharpener. The pencil moaned as the boy turned the handle on the pencil sharpener. So underline the object and circle the verb. And last but not least, the tornado pranced across the field and wiped away everything in its path. Tornado pranced. It's bound to happen soon. Child. Okay, we got it. Okay. <laughs> so underline the thing and circle the verb. Last page. So again, if you're missing any, don't worry. You still got two days to fix it up and time during the 30 minute read to catch up if you need to. But let's move on to do situational irony. I find that this can be a tricky one for kids, although it is a sixth grade target. Um, situational irony. All right, situational irony is, I should probably just tell you this first one so that you have a working definition going ahead. Situational irony is when something happens that is the opposite of what the reader expects, right? We did, I, we, we talked a lot about irony in the first trimester, but again, it's been a while and it's good to review these things before I send you off to seventh grade and you're expected to know them already. It's not that I didn't teach you, but it's good to review it before you move on so you don't get to seventh grade and you're like, I don't know if we ever learned that last year. Situational irony is when something happens that is the opposite from what was expected, what the reader expected to happen. Remember in your um, reading responses, when you were hybrid, you would have to read for 30 minutes and then tell me something that happened that you weren't expecting, which uh, we were really flexible with, right? Like as long as you didn't see this coming, we called it situational irony. Not necessarily though. Um, the other way is like when a character was talking sarcastically and they meant the opposite. Like, yeah, you're really good at blah, blah, blah. When you're really not. Um, we counted that as irony as well, right? But now we're talking about situational irony, something happening, the situation in the story, like in the plot, that is the opposite of what the reader was expecting to happen. It'd be like if you left early to get to school in the morning and because you left earlier, you got stuck in traffic which you usually avoid by leaving later, let's pretend. And so you ended up late to school, even though you left early. Like that would be ironic. It's the opposite of what you assumed would happen. Okay, so number one, 
the answer is something that happens that is the opposite of what was expected. As long as you use your eyes, you should see that answer there, right? All right, so let's look at number two. And again, this, this can be tricky, so think, think deeply. If Darcy went, Darcy, if Darcy went to the party dressed as a swamp monster instead of a bunny, I mean, did we know what she was going to be before she showed up to the costume party? Probably not. Let's assume. We haven't talked to Darcy. We don't know what she's wearing to the party. All right, so she shows up and she's dressed as a swamp monster. Is that situational irony? A says she probably would have won. Won what? Okay. B says her mother would have worn the bunny costume. Why is her mom coming? C says winning the contest would not be ironic. And D is it would be, would have been really ironic. Just ask yourself, is that really that ironic? Okay, I feel I've already said too much. Let's go on to number three. All right, let's assume Todd did no preparation for this test. If Todd failed, <laughs> would it be April Fool's? funny, ironic, or the opposite of ironic. I mean, especially if I told you that he did nothing to prepare, showed up for the test, and then failed it. Just sounds like he earned that, right? So is that irony? That's the question. Number four, in situational irony, the irony is revealed in the, what part of the story? Is it the beginning, the middle, or the end? <coughs> of course, they have that all backwards. Is it revealed in the end, the middle, the beginning? So typically, where would we see this? This is like the part where you're like, oh, I didn't see that coming. When does that usually happen in a story, typically speaking? Um, especially if it's like, if it's a TV series, like, and you're waiting to figure out how it all works out. When, is, when are you gonna find out when it all works out? In the beginning, the middle, or the end? Wait. I can run around. Thank again. you. Please run around. Just just run for the next 10 minutes until I'm done. Uh, number five, a poor family donates food to the food bank. And then a few days later, they find a box of food on their porch from the food bank. They were chosen to receive food because they seemed so needy. Does this represent situational irony? Yes or no? And then a boy's on a soccer team. He practices goal kicks every day. During his first game, he kicks the ball into the goal and scores a point. Is this situational irony? No or yes. Number seven, which one of the following is an example of irony? Okay, so listen very carefully to these. Which is an example of situational irony? Ready? A. After working in the garden all day, a family is too tired to eat. So after like growing food all day, they're too tired to eat. B, a singing contest for a spot and a band is won by someone who already had a band. A singing contest for a spot and a band is won by someone who already had a band. It used to be a big deal. Like they would have reality TV shows to like fill a spot in a band. So that's why that sounds so exciting. C, a girl in a race cries when she falls and scrapes her knee. Or D, a boy digs in the sand at the beach and finds a shell. Which one of those was ironic? Like the opposite of what you expected would happen. And then eight is just to write the title of a book that includes situational irony. So most do, I'll give you that hint. Like probably if you write most titles down, that's fine. Like I know the books we've read this year have had situational irony in it. Um, we talked a lot about that with those first couple books we read because we use them as models. So if you want to write down any of those, but also if you've read a book and like Maybe the ending was like totally like, what? I wasn't expecting that to happen. And that counts too. All right, I think we're done. 
with our poetry packet at this time. So again, if you still have pieces to fill out, you know, check it over before you hand it in and make sure it's completely done. If it is, you can put it in the inbin, make sure your name's on it. If you still need more time, we're gonna do a 30 minute read right now. So you have time to um, read, but also if you wanted to fill out a few more questions at the end of your 30 minute read in your poetry packet to finish it up, that's fine too. And then you can just do the same tomorrow um, and make sure that it is completed. Does that make sense? Hopefully. All right, so your 30 minute read. Yeah, 30 minute read. I'm just trying to think what how much time we'll have tomorrow. How much, you know, if we have time for a 30 minute read tomorrow, great. If it's a 20 minute read or a 10 minute read, that's fine too. Tomorrow we're reading a short story and it's pretty long. So um, there might be less time to do a 30 minute read, but that's okay. We'll take what we get. And then um, I'll collect your, your uh, reads when I get there on Wednesday because Thursday, Thursday, because on Friday, you won't have ELA at all because of field day. So that will be exciting. So we won't have to do a 30 minute read that day. So we'll be done with them early. We won't fill up our whole front page. Um, so if you're working ahead, which I know some of you like to do, just note that you're not expected to do the entire thing. It's like whatever we have time for this week is good enough. Um, so 30 minute read, you're looking for literary devices, simile, metaphor, personification, hyperbole. I think those are the four. And then different types of verbs. All right, make sure you fill out at least three sentences. That's your ticket to lunch. And I think that's it. So I will see you after lunch.